When life throws you a curveball, how are you going to handle adversity? Welcome to the Fearless Mindset Podcast, where you're about to go on a journey as I interview security, business, and entertainment leaders on what it takes to stay fearless. I'm your host, Mark Ludlow, and enjoy today's episode. Hey, everybody. Mark Ludlow with the Fearless Mindset Podcast. And, you know, if you are uh, if you follow Mike Hill, you know he's been overseas in Ukraine working and getting sick, and we didn't know if he was going to be okay, if he's going to make it. We are concerned about him. As you can see, he is physically back in the stateside, healthy, comfortable in his, uh, his, uh, his comfortable attire in the woods somewhere in the East Coast. So uh, I just wanted to welcome back. And I'm glad you're safe and sound and healthy and alive after uh, how, how long were you in Ukraine? A year? Uh, so I've been over there working for the past two years. Um, this last trip was about nine months. Wow. So, okay. Uh, so how are you doing? How culture shock right now? Going from there to here? Different worlds? No, you're not. I, uh, I've been back about three weeks now. Uh, or two weeks, and uh, I've pretty much just kind of laid low and, uh, you know, haven't really just kind of enjoyed being back and not having to worry about anything and uh, just just decompressing. And uh, it's been really nice. Got to spend some time with my parents and uh, some other family members and stuff. So um, now, uh, now I can turn it up a notch and start uh, handling the issues and stuff that I need to um back here and get back to work so get back to work now you were volunteering over there were you getting paid over there to be over there or were you just volunteering out of your goodness of your heart to help the people over there a little bit of both a little bit of both got it okay you gotta survive pay the bills so exactly no i know what the media is telling us what's going on over there and we're all sick of watching the media because we all don't really believe in the media anymore. And uh, what what is going on over there? Can you give us a little pulse on the ground on what you know, what you hear, and is it all propaganda? Is it a bunch of bull crap? <laughs> so. I mean, to be honest with you, man, I've been very surprised at how uh, how much the media is hasn't been covering it over here, and uh, how much politics has uh, has gotten involved with support of Ukraine. Um, you know. Obviously, the big issue right now is all the stuff that's going on the border, and you know they're trying to pass this bill with with uh, you know uh, aid and all that stuff going to both Israel and Ukraine, um, but it's being held up because of the situation at the border and, and our political experts and uh, great <laughs> minds that are in DC. Um, the great, exactly, you know, the great minds in DC can't, can't come to a can't come to an agreement and uh you know while they're up there arguing and bickering and stuff uh people are dying and uh you know we 100 percent have uh have seen it it's effect in ukraine um with the lack of you know dwindling supplies and ammunition um you know we're having to be very selective of targets to to conserve ammunition um you know since i left uh, we've lost a divka um, which really sucks, but um, I believe it was a very smart uh, decision to pull back and not just um, waste the lives of, of the Ukrainian soldiers we have there. Um, you know, we're facing a much larger opponent. Um, uh, they have a lot more resources than we do, a lot more men, a lot more equipment. Um, so, I mean, they literally just come in waves. And, uh, I mean, that's kind of their MO is they just, they just throw as much at it as they possibly can. And eventually it'll break. They don't care how many lives they lose. They don't care how much ammo they waste. And they just, they just push and push and push. Now, is it true the Russian soldiers are surrendering pretty quickly when they see you guys? They just said, hey, we've had enough. Is that kind of what's happening? Or they just, uh, uh, yeah. what, what's the, what's the morale out there? What's that? What's it like? It's just it's a different world for us. Hey man, you still there? Yep, still here. All right, I lost you there for a minute. Did uh did it freeze on there? Yeah, we're fine. We're good. We're still recording. Okay. 
Okay. Um, yeah, so did you get everything I said? Yeah, yeah. It's just they come in waves. The Russians are attacking in waves because they have a lot more resources over there, a lot more manpower, a lot more equipment. Yeah, for sure. Um, they and, probably have you know, what, millions of soldiers and millions of equipment that they haven't even unleashed yet. Well, uh, I don't know. Um, you know, if you look at their tactics and, and if you look at their tactics and the way they, I think right now they're throwing everything they got at it. I mean, they're hurting just as bad. I mean, we're inflicting a lot of casualties. Um, you know, if you just take the, the size comparison between the Ukrainian army and the Russian army and the, um, amount of casualties that we're, we're causing, um, the Russians are definitely taking a, a heavy beating. Um, wow. But the thing, the thing about it is, I mean, you know, the Russians have, uh, you know, much better equipment. Um, well, I wouldn't say much better equipment, but I mean, they have much more resources, um, and can use it a lot more than we can. Um, and us being a smaller opponent, you know, without the West support, there's no way we could actually do it. And, you know, the U S has been, one of the leading or the leading uh, partner that has been supplying us. And, you know, since this bill has been held up since I think it's been since November, um, we've definitely felt that impact. So, but I can say that um, a lot of our European partners have started stepping up a lot more and providing uh, a lot more aid. Um, So, I mean, but we still need, we still need the U S the U.S. has got to be a part of it, or oh, otherwise they're going to rush to take take the whole entire region over, probably. They're going to attempt it. And if we don't stop them in Ukraine, man, I mean, uh, yeah. who knows what they'll do next? Who's next? I mean, I think the Europeans understand it because they're they're close to it, and sure, um, you know, it's, it's in their backyard. Um, but you know, here in America, it seems like a lot of people. Have are now against the war in Ukraine um, solely because of the, poli- the 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 political bullshit that's going on right now um, with Seems the election and everything and and the mudslinging and all this other stuff and you know I'm not going to sit here and say that there isn't a political agenda associated with all this stuff but you know that's not the reason I'm there I'm there because of the the poor bastards that are dying in the in the trenches and uh, the families that are losing their homes the kids that are dying. True, true. On the train ride out, you know, when I crossed in in the Poland, I mean, I literally could feel like a sense of relief. You know, everybody on the train was kind of just, you could tell they were a little bit more uppity. Um, Or not uppity, but, you know, a little bit more energetic and and happier. Well, yeah. Crossed over. They've been, what, a campaign of war for, what, two years now since Russia launched the first initial wave on them and hasn't stopped? Yeah, we just celebrate we just celebrated the two year anniversary on 20, uh, February 24th. Um, and it's, 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 it's crazy that it's gone on this long and you know, the magnitude of, of what this war is. I also don't think a lot of people understand. I mean, you know, just a couple of days ago, we sunk another ship and I think that's, that's 12, <laughs> Rus- 12 <laughs> Russian ships we sank. I mean, yeah. That's probably the most ships. I mean, and that definitely is the most ships that have been sank since uh, World War II. That's so. a good point. And that's all the, the dr- underwater drones that we've been giving them, right? Or they've been getting equipment for drones to do that? Well, I'll, yeah, I'd say we've been supplying more uh, more of the components and stuff. Um, but the Ukrainians are far ahead of us, uh, of the West. Interesting. Um, and, and developing drones. Um, they're taking drones. You know that they're manufacturing a lot of their own. Oh, they um, are. Didn't know that. One, yeah, for sure. One of the bad things about uh, Western supplied drones is is the cost of them. I mean, you're looking at hundreds of thousands of dollars in a drone that may or may or may not work. Right. And if it does, you might get five flights out of it before it gets you know it gets compromised or crashes or something like that. So sure. You know the Ukrainians have adapted to that, and I and I largely believe. This is what has made them so successful um, is their adaption to to be able to, to create these drones and to defeat Russian jamming and, and the use of drones. I mean, that's honestly what's holding the Russians at bay. Wow. Who would have thought? 
drones. Not 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 just that alone, but yeah. I mean that that has a large part to do with with them holding them at bay. I mean, the casualties alone are in what half a million people have been killed in the war on the Ukraine side, and probably half a million in Russia side, at least. You know, man, they, you know, it's it's all obviously an information uh, information war, and uh, you know, I, I haven't actually seen a correct or what I think would be a correct figure sure. from either side. Um, and to be honest with you, I don't really know. If anybody knows, because, I mean, there's literally thousands of people dying each day and just getting obliterated and disappearing, turning into pink mist. Um, yeah. I mean, yeah. It's, it's, it's brutal. I mean, I've seen bodies that have been on the battlefield for months, maybe even a year. Really? So, wow. Oh, yeah. You walk in, in formation or whatever, you're walking around doing your advisor stuff, and, oh, there's that guy again or that person again, that body. Yep. Wow. Yep. How, how traumatic. Dang. That's just that's war. That's just what you're seeing every day. And you're are you in an advisory type of situation out there consulting that way? Uh, to an extent, yeah. Got it. Okay. I know you're doing some medical stuff, support and all that too for them out there at one point. Exactly. So I wasn't sure. Oh, I know you don't want to go into too much detail. But uh, wow, crazy. So do you think this thing's going to end anytime soon, or is it going to take Trump getting off? Say, hey. You guys come together. Let's meet. Let's get this settled right now. I mean, that's probably everybody's wondering that. You know, man, I mean, everybody wants a quick solution. But, you know, if you go back and you look at the history of this, the Russians have been doing this shit for, for since, I mean, what, 2000, actually since 1991 when the fall of the Soviet Union. I mean, yeah. it's been going on since then. But, um, you know, they invaded Georgia. I think it was in 2008. Um, you know, all those little countries around there, they've 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 been messing with them. And, you know, the war in Ukraine actually started in 2014 when the uh, the Russians decided to annex uh, Crimea and, you know, the fighting in the Donbass and all that good stuff. Um, so, I mean, the Ukrainians have been fighting on their own for, what, 10 years now? At least. Yeah. Um, and it wasn't it wasn't really until um, the invasion in, in uh, uh, 2022 um, that the rest of the world kind of started paying attention to what was going on because now it was a major conflict. Um, but I, I don't think it's going to be a come to the peace table and just talk. No, right? you know, not at all. Putin obviously, Putin obviously has an agenda. Absolutely and, does. Um, and he, he's, he's continuing it and he's, I mean, he's mad. Um, and with our, Piss poor foreign policy right now. You know? <laughs> no doubt about that. It's crazy. All the Darth, all the Darth Vaders of the world are are standing up and deciding, hey, we're going to take a shot now, and this is our time, and they're all coming together. So, you know, it's it's my hopes that it ends soon. I mean, the suffering and the dying and and the shit that's going on there is is horrible. And you know, Ukraine's a beautiful country. Um, it has a lot to offer. Um, the people are very, very good and, and nice. Um, they're, they're, they're amazing people. Um, you know, it's, it's really, it's really shitty what's going on there. There's so many, what, millions of refugees going up to Poland now and just spreading all over the place just to, to see, seek oh, safety. More, yeah. yeah. Millions. Um, but what, also what a lot of people don't understand is, I mean, Ukraine's the largest, largest country in Europe. And, uh, it you know, is. from the time you cross, from the time you cross Poland, from the, across the border in Poland, you know, it's, it's 15, 15 to 18 hours, depending on where you're going, um, to actually get to the front. Um, but the bad part is, you know, the rest of the country suffers from the, the rocket attacks and the Shahids and, and all the stuff that Russia throws, the long distance stuff, you know, they might be removed from the front, but, you know, there's still a threat of, of rockets and, uh, Shahids and drones and stuff coming over. So, I mean, most of the major hitty cities usually get hit, um, at least once a week or, you know, maybe, maybe more often than that. Um, you know, and they've largely re relied on the Western supplied air defense systems to defend against that. And it, the past year it's, it's worked. I mean, um, this past winter, um, we didn't, we didn't lose power in the major cities, you know, um, and it was largely because the Russians couldn't hit the, the power place or the uh, power plants. 
Okay. Uh, um, you know, because we had their defense systems. Um, but the, the winter before that, it was rolling blackouts. I mean, it was – the winter before that was brutal, and that's before we had the air defense systems. So, you know, it's – you know, even if you look at, at – uh, you know, we went on a, a roll there where we were taking down at least one fighter jet a day for, I think, 15 days straight. I saw that. That's um, crazy. You know, the Russians are losing a shit ton of equipment and a shit ton of people, and there's no way that they can continue to uh, to roll at this pace. Right. So, um, but with with spring here and, you know, the, dr- the ground drying up and everything, um, you know, you're going to see a, a lot more fighting. Um, obviously, you know, spring and summer's fighting season. So it unfortunately is. So I, I'm hearing that Russia is looking at talking to China about bringing forces from China and Africa, bringing people in, just giving them weapons, go to Ukraine and shoot people. I'm hearing those theories. You know, I mean, there's, there's, I mean, recently there was a, a, a thing that came out. There were some citizens from India that had gone to Russia on holiday and, uh, somehow, got wrapped up in some legal issues and ended up in Belarus. And then now they're, they're being forced to fight for the Russians. Wow. Um, you know, we've seen, we've seen guys from Africa, you know, there's, you know, they're, they're recruiting people as well. And you know, I think they're hurting for people as well. Um, you know, you don't largely hear about Wagner as much anymore. Um, they kind of dissipated, but, you know, they're still around. There's a lot of, there's a few other PMCs that are operating there as well. Whatever happened here over there, um, they say they shot the guy out of the sky in his private jet or something like that, and he's dead. Any any word on it? Does he really exist, or does he double die, or what happened there with that guy? <laughs> you know, man, uh, as far as everybody says, he's dead, but uh, you yeah. know, I think it was all uh, – it was a little coincidental um, for me, and, and I, I hope he's dead. I hope he's gone. Um, but it, it seemed all too coincidental. You know, we had, he did this, uh, almost like a coup. He tried to pull and then, you know, that got shut down and then, you know, him and Putin were at it for a while. And then next thing you know, he's getting shot down out of the sky and miraculously everybody that was in charge was on that plane. So they're all dead now. Um, so, but wow. you know, the Russians, crazy. they've, they've always, they've, they've always been known for their, their diff- disinformation campaigns and, uh, propaganda and all that stuff. And I mean, it's alive and well, they're a hundred percent doing that. And they're good at it. They're very effective. They are. That's, that's one that's, of their strongest things. Do you see, do you see, when you see the online stuff you see on Facebook and all that, can you dictate, figure out, Oh, that's from Russia. Can you just, I might see that from your background and, and what you've done in the military, do you, can you see your radar goes up? There's, there's some things that, yeah, um, you know, you could tell that it's been photoshopped or, you know, it's, it's complete bullshit or we actually were involved in the operation and we know, or, um, you know, there's things that you can point out, but I mean, it, it's more that, you know, that, for us, it's great that we know that stuff, but for the people that don't know any better, that's what they're going after, and that's the people they want to – that's their target. Yeah. That's who they're trying to influence. So, you know, they – some things are shitty and some things are good. I mean, and, you know, the Russians have a large net. You know, after the collapse of the Soviet Union, you know, Russians scattered everywhere and mm-hmm. all over Europe, all over the U.S., and, you know – to, to think that no, nothing has been compromised and that there aren't Russian agents working, um, you know, you, you kind of got to be uh, a little ignorant. Very ignorant. And going to the election cycle, they're going to be using propaganda all over again. Oh, 100 percent. I mean, it, it's already started. I mean, you know, uh, it, it's you can just tell by the 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 intensity of uh or the passion of the two different sides here in the u.s how oh, yeah. much you know influence and, and i'd i'd venture to say that our, our media is even compromised i mean you know our media puts out what what they want us to hear um so i've gotten to the point where i don't even consider them a reliable source um just because I know that there's 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 compromise within within the ranks. 
Yeah, absolutely. We're seeing it. I mean, the propaganda, the narratives, and this is like, wow. It's not the news that we grew up in anyway. Tom Brokaw days, they long gone. Yeah, for sure. I mean, it's kind of sickening to sit. I mean, I get it having a 24 hour news cycle and all stuff, but you know, yeah, I, I, I just, that, I don't know. I can't sit down and just listen to the news over and over because I mean, it's honestly, it's, it's, it's depressing. <laughs> depressing. Um, it is <laughs> like, you know, I, I've been watching a lot of Netflix movies and go to the movies lately after five o'clock. I'm going to go watch a movie. I'm going to go take a hike. I'm just, why watch it? Nothing's going to change until November 4th. If it does change, we don't know. And I think, I think a lot of, uh, People following politics are going, well, let's watch the polls. And I have a buddy is a former, he's a Marine Corps devil dog too. And he goes, dude, the polls don't matter. It's who shows up to vote? What's matter? Polls don't matter nothing. They, yeah. Polls are, who cares? What, what matters yeah. is November 4th on who shows up to vote. That's what matters. Exactly. And uh, I think everybody gets sucked, sucked into that propaganda machine. I think, you know, yeah. question people probably listening to this podcast is, Mike, is have you ever been in danger for your life while you're over there? Like you thought you're going to die at any time? Been out there? You've been pretty safe and pretty advanced, or have you wondered a couple times? Uh, this is my day. No, a hundred percent, man. You know, um, it's an active, it's an active battlefield. I mean, it's not like uh, you know, when you're up towards the front. I mean, if you're within you know, twenty kilometers of that front, I mean, you're you're susceptible to artillery, to, to drones. I mean, everything. And, uh, there's been quite a few times, man. Um, but you know, the man upstairs has been taking care of me. I mean, we've lost <laughs> quite a few guys and, uh, you know, we've got a few that have lost limbs and, um, I mean, it's, it's, it's pretty intense. Do you feel like you have a guardian angel with you sometimes when you're out there? Like how the heck did I not get hit? Uh, you know, man, it, when it's your time, it's your time. Um, and I, I definitely believe somebody's been looking out for me. Um, I made it this long. Um, and I don't want to jinx myself. Um, but you know, somebody's definitely been, uh, been looking out for me from up above. So how many, how many close calls do you think you've been on? About at least a half a dozen where you can hear the bullets flying by your ear? Uh, probably more than that. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> That's crazy, dude. Did you have a flat jacket wrapped around your head? Did <laughs> Cavalier? Dude, that's that's a trip. Uh, it's uh, it's definitely proved. Uh, you know, there's a lot of things that have, that we uh, have taken from the GWAT um, that are not applicable to the war in Ukraine, and one of those is uh, just plate carriers. Mm. Um, you know. You need the soft armor. You know, a lot of injuries were coming from shrapnel, you know, going around the plate or whatever. Um, we had one guy that, that got caught with an airburst and it went down the top and, uh, went in, hit his artery and he bled out. Um, so, wow. you know, the days of wearing plate carriers and wearing everything on your chest, um, are not as prevalent. You know, I kind of think of it as when I first went in the army, you know, when we had the old LBEs and all that stuff, you know. A lot of people are moving stuff from their vest down to their belts now because of the weight. And, you know, you're carrying a lot more because, you know, there is no, there is no helicopters. There's no helo resupplies and all that stuff. You know, you're pretty much carrying out with you what, with what you're, what you, what you got. And, you know, hopefully somebody can bring in some, some resupplies to you. But, you know, you need to depend on what you have to sustain yourself for a little while. Um, so, wow. You know, that plate carrier is now being replaced with full on vest and all that stuff. Um, side, you know, soft armor and all that good stuff. So, so do you miss the exec protection what? industry at all? Or are you enjoying it out? I mean, not that you're enjoying it, but <laughs> <laughs> I had to ask. <laughs> we got buffed out of Mike. He thought that was funny. <laughs> oh. You know, man, not getting shot at is, uh, is pretty nice. Um, you <laughs> yeah. know, obviously the, the threats between the two are, are very different. Um, mm -hmm. but you know, yeah, I mean, I do miss it. Um, I miss it sometimes. Um, but I feel like I'm making a bigger impact with what I'm doing right now, uh, than, you know, doing the executive protection thing. Well, you're part um, of history. I mean, yeah. think about that. You're part of us global history right now. 
You're out there. 100%. I mean, Mike Hill's out there. This is our shoulder to shoulder with the Ukrainians and whoever else is out there from other parts of the world helping out. And you're doing this out of the goodness of your heart. You, you're just not, you're, you're wired a little different from most. I have to say that. I mean, you have a big heart. You can, call and me, most, you can, call me, you can go ahead and call me crazy if you want. No, I said, you have a big heart, brother. You have a big heart. <laughs> and I admire that about well, you. I mean, I, I couldn't do I what you, you do. The biggest thing about this for me is, uh, you know, it's black and white to me. You know, what mm. the Russians are doing wrong is doing wrong. And, um, you know, they invaded a country and they're trying to take people's land. I mean, a, another country's land. I mean, I know people that have houses and stuff that were in the, that are in the occupied territories that they can't even go back to get their stuff. Wow. I mean, they left and that was it. And, you know, there's lawyers and stuff that are trying to, you know, humanitarian lawyers that are trying to work back and forth across the sides and, and work stuff out. But the Russians are saying, yeah, this is ours now. And I know that um, in some of the houses, you know, they still had, they still or at one point they still had access to their, you know, their cameras and stuff in their houses. And the Russians actually moved people into their houses and people were living in their houses. That's crazy. So the Russians are living in those people's houses as like little bases. Oh, yeah. Oh, man, that's no, not even make... full on living, living there. Dang, dude, that sucks. They built their whole future right there and taken. Yep. Now, one of the guys, uh, he built the house from the ground up with his own hands and had it for about a year. And then all this stuff happened. Wow. And lost everything. I'd be heartbroken over that one. Not to mention, like, the war atrocities that, you know, they're committing, killing civilians and, you know, the mass graves and, you know, killing, you know, killing yeah. POWs and raping. Right. And, they're known you know, for that. Just, they're fucking animals. Dude, I just, that's just dark, a dark area. Just think of how dark that is. I get it. Do you think the agencies over there, the CIA is running around on the ground in Ukraine getting intel for, you know, for, for intel for the brass back here in the States, or do they really even care? I lost you there for a minute. Oh, you got copy now? Yeah, I got you. I was, I was asking you, do you think the CIA is gathering, gathering intel on the ground in Ukraine to give us updates here in the Pentagon? Do you think that's happening? You know, man, I, I'm not going to speak specifically to any agency, um, but I think we all are, are smart enough to know that, um, you know, this is a huge focal point for the whole world. Um, and if there's any involvement from anybody, there's going to be somebody there and gathering intelligence and, and doing stuff. Um, you know, that, I think that just goes without saying. I would imagine you probably have some special forces that are on classified missions out there, probably doing something as well. And that's, that's kind of my theory, but who knows? <laughs> yeah, man. I mean, that's, you know, it's all speculation and, uh, you know, you really t t to discuss stuff like that and to, to, to even bring that stuff up. I mean, that takes it to a whole nother level because, you know, if that is, if that is happening, how is the Russians, how are they going to use that against the rest of the world? I mean, you know, True. but I mean, I think we're, we're all smart enough to, to, to gather our own opinions. Um, yeah, this is an opinion, on. folks. Listening to the audience, this is a, totally our opinion, my my theory. I don't know for a fact, but you know, this is a global. Everybody's globally impacted, and Russia started this, like Mike said. And um, who's to say what's going to happen? You know, I hope I hope they stop. I hope they stop fighting. But knowing, and Mike said, you know, Putin's got a venomous thing about built, rebuilding the the Russian Empire. I think it's about restoring mother russia all over again that's probably what his theory is that's that's kind of what you're thinking i mean right? that, that's 100 percent what it seems like i mean you know I, the thing is like i never think i've always thought the the cold war never ended it just kind of went dormant you know the ussr collapsed and you know they went dormant for a while just to rebuild and restructure and i think now um we're seeing um, the revise of, of what was and then trying to take back what it was. And I think that 100% is Putin's mindset and what he wants to do.